Okay. Okay, hello everybody. Thank you for having me. And it's my pleasure to be here to talk to you about something that all of us are going through in one way or another. So as Mary Jean said, I'm a psychotherapist and I'm in private practice. And the majority of the people that I'm talking to right now are coming to talk to me about dealing with the anxiety that they have about going back into the world. And uh, I'm sure for each of you, there may be different responses. And the first thing I want to say is that every response is okay. If you're excited because the lockdown is over, that's great. If you're anxious and you're not so sure, that's great too, right? Sorry, not great, <laughs> but it's okay and it's appropriate and you're allowed to have all of these mixed feelings. And sometimes in us, we have a little bit of both where there's a bit of, yay, I get to do more things and yet I'm unsure what that means. I'm unsure how to proceed moving forward. So I wanted to share a couple of tips um, and also some explanation to help you guys understand what is going on within our bodies, what it, what's causing the anxiety, what's kind of behind some of these uh, anxious thoughts or anxious feelings, and how to cope with it and how to really move forward in our life. So the first thing I, I want you to recognize, and I'm sure most of you are quite aware of this, is that for at least 18 months, our nervous systems have been under attack. And by that, I mean, we've received very strong messages to be afraid and afraid of something that is actually quite unknown. We have no history with it. Um, it's invisible. These are, uh, this is a virus that you can't see, but you're being told that it could kill you. It could kill your loved ones. It strikes at any time. It's highly, it's highly contagious. Um, and there's been so much unknown about it that it's creating so much uncertainty within our body, within our mind and within our nervous system. We've received strong messages of stay home so that you will save a life. Like I remember seeing billboards that are literally that save, stay home, save a life. So a lot of pressure on us to not only be responsible for our own well-being, but for the responsibility for the well-being of others too. So I want you to imagine what people who live in countries where war is a reality every day. So every day we don't know if today is the day where a bomb is going to fall upon your house and kill you and your entire family. And you can imagine the stress that that puts on those people. Well, that's the equivalent to what we've been experiencing for at least 18 months. It's been subtler, but it's been there. And again, depending on what your response to this throughout the pandemic, it's going to impact the way what you're experiencing right now. So what happens with our nervous system? There's two parts of our nervous system. There's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with the idea of fight or flight. So what happens when the brain perceives danger? It sends a signal to the rest of the body that goes danger, danger, danger. There's something that is threatening me and we need to either fight it or we need to flee and run away or also freeze or play dead. This is an automatic system that comes from our old brain. We actually call it the reptilian brain. It's at the part of our brain stem here. There is nothing logical about this part of the brain. It perceives danger and it responds. And its only uh, concern is, is my heart beating and are my lungs breathing? That's it. So the blood actually flows away from the head into the extremities to give us the energy to run or um, a fight, whatever it is. So this is what's been going on. Even though the danger, the wild animal that is out there to attack us is a virus that is actually not physically something that we can see or experience, this is what we have felt like we're experiencing for 18 months. That's a very prolonged period of time to feel uneasy. Okay, so there's a lot of chemicals that go on with our nervous system. We have cortisol, we have adrenaline. All of that is continuously to pump through our system and it keeps us at this heightened level of arousal so that we're able to respond physically to that danger at any point. So the first thing I want to help you to understand is we cannot have a rational conversation with that part of our brain. When our nervous system is really engaged all we can do is to help our body to calm down and then we can have a rational conversation with it. So if you have a fear and then 
part of you is like, this is irrational, like it is safe or I'm vaccinated or whatever your beliefs are, I should feel more safe. The, the, the um, risk is less. You can't have a rational conversation with that part of your brain while you're in fight or flight. So the first thing that we need to help you to do is to come down from that nervous system activation that you've been experiencing for a long time. So if you've been experiencing a high level of nervous system activation for at least 18 months, chances are it's going to take at least a couple of weeks, if not a couple of months to come down from that. And that's important to remember because we're often harsh on ourselves and we're like, well, why am I not feeling better faster? Because you've been experiencing this for a really long period of time. So once we've allowed the body to come down, then we can have a more rational conversation with ourselves to understand what maybe the actual threat is. We can have a different conversation. So um, I wanna talk a little bit about how to help the nervous system calm down. Things like, and it's funny, you guys were just talking about unplugging. Unplugging is one of those things that we need to do, right? Anything that takes us away from being in the present moment, we need to allow ourselves to turn that off. We need to turn off the news. We need to turn off other people's you know, uh, um, comments and things through social media. We need to be able to have a break from being bombarded with other people's messages. Uh, being in nature is very grounding for us and, and can help the nervous system to come down because there's less stimulation from our environment. And that is the one good thing that I've seen come out of this pandemic is so many more people are spending time in nature and I hope that's something that will continue. But I want uh, you to think about how do you feel when you're in nature versus how you feel like on a downtown busy street. Notice how the nervous system is engaged. I am blessed, I have a farm with horses. Part of the, the work that I do is I do horse assisted therapy. So I have been so blessed to be out on the farm and be in nature every single day. And it has made such a huge difference in the way that I've experienced this pandemic. Being in wide open, open spaces, allowing ourselves to engage our senses as part of nature can really, really help. Breathing is also really important. Taking long, slow, deep breaths. What happens when we're stressed and overwhelmed is we actually only breathe from the top of our chest. So I'm going to invite everybody to do something with me right now. I want you to put your hand on, one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. I want you to take a nice big breath. And I want you to notice where are you breathing from? Are you breathing from your chest or your stomach? If you're breathing from your chest, you're stressed. You're not taking long, slow, deep breaths. Does everyone know where your diaphragm is? Your diaphragm is underneath your rib cage. That's how big your lungs are. And I'm cut off here, but you're looking at about this length is the space that your lungs occupy. And if you're only breathing this much, it means your body has to work harder. And if you're not breathing deeply, it increases your heart to pump more blood, increases your heart rate, activates the nervous system again. And you can see it's, it keeps going round and round. So breathing, practicing daily breath, and it doesn't have to be that difficult. You can do it while you're sitting in front of the television. You can do it while you're driving. Breathe deep into your body. Breathe all the way down into your stomach. The best type of breathing is called diaphragmatic breathing. And basically it means breathing down deep into your diaphragm. This, the easiest way to do it is if you're lying down and you can put your hand or a book on your stomach. And when you breathe in, the stomach should rise. And when you exhale, the stomach will go in. If you've ever watched a child sleep, their bellies or dogs <laughs> or cats, their bellies go up and down. And that's because they are breathing fully, okay? So the breath helps to send a message to the nervous system, we're okay, we can calm down. The other thing is grounding. So I do a lot of, um, you know, talking about how energy impacts us and using grounding is very important. So grounding can be putting your feet in the earth, actually grounding and connecting with the earth. 
And you can imagine that you have tree roots growing at the bottom of your feet and really connecting with the earth. Okay. Anything that you can do to calm the nervous system, self-soothing behavior is also important. A hot bath, a hot shower, um, having a nap, um, spending time with animals is huge. I do animal assisted therapy. So our animals have been so huge and instrumental in helping us through this. Petting an animal lowers your blood pressure and your heart rate. Taking a dog for a walk also too. And then one of the, the main things that I do is I talk to people about a safe place meditation. And you can access this. I'm going to lead you through it so that you guys have a chance to experience. I have a YouTube channel. It's just my name, Jasmine Chomsky. And it has this meditation on there. So if you like it, you can uh, take a listen there and find it there and, and practice that. I, I put it together for my clients because they really enjoyed it. What the safe place does is the safe place is helping the brain to feel safe. Okay. Remember that our nervous system is activated by a perceived threat. Okay. So what we want to do is help the brain to feel safe again. We're going to do that by visualizing a place where each of us feels safe. Right? So I invite you to think about that for a moment, and then I'm going to lead you through it. And if you want to turn off your camera so that you don't feel self-conscious about it, get comfortable in your chair. So think about where your safe place might be. Take a moment, settle yourself in. And when you're ready, I'm inviting you to close your eyes. Take a nice big breath that goes all the way down to your toes. And just allow yourself to just settle down into your body. And you're gonna start just by saying to yourself, I am safe. I am safe. And let that word safe lead you to a place that is safe for you. I want you to to imagine that you're there in this moment. And in this moment, I want to engage all of your senses, thinking about what you can hear. What are the sounds that are present in your safe place? I want you to picture in your mind where you would be. Where would you be physically? Are you sitting down? Are you walking? What are you touching? water, trees, what are the trees like? What are the colors that are present? What time of year is it? What time of day? What does the temperature feel like? What can you smell there within your safe place? How does the body feel in your safe place? And just allow yourself to focus now on the feelings of safety and peace, calm. And just continue to just visualize yourself there right now. Just noticing how good it feels to be in your safe place. Engaging all of your senses, what you see and hear and touch and smell. Allow your body to sink a little deeper into the chair now. Breathing into the body. Now just become aware of the body. And coming back into this present moment, holding on to that feeling of safety and relaxation. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Good. Just taking a moment to notice how you feel. And so here's the thing. You didn't physically go there. And yet you were able to feel different. 
And you're able to feel differently based on the image that you are showing the brain. You are helping the brain to feel safe. Okay, everybody come back now. Open your eyes. Jasmine, you're a little choppy again. Can you hear me? Mary Jean, can you hear me? I can hear you. You just it's just a little bit choppy, but I can hear you. I think you're freezing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I can hear you now. Can you hear yeah. me? Yes. Yeah, that's better. So sorry, did you, were you able to hear the whole meditation? We could hear it, but it was a little bit choppy. You, you kind of had to read between the lines. That's okay. I think we got the gist of it. Oh. Yeah. Te <laughs> Technology. I know. So if you can go and check out my uh, YouTube video, it has that uh, safe place meditation there. So you can try it again on your own. Um, I can't see anybody, so I don't know what is going on here. Can you still hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. You're fine now. Oh, it looks like you froze again. No? Oh, no. Go ahead. Oh, there we are. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, um, please let me know if you in the chat if you can't hear me. So once we have helped the brain to calm down and we are giving the brain something else to focus on by focusing on the safe place, the brain and the nervous system can start to relax. When the nervous system is more relaxed, now you can start doing things to push yourself outside of your comfort, comfort zone by being able to go out into public again by being able to maybe do something that you've kind of gotten out of the habit of doing and to feel more relaxed doing this. So my recommendation always is before you go out into a situation that's causing anxiety, do the work to calm yourself first. Please do not push yourself to try something from a very heightened level of anxiety. It's not going to go well. It's okay that you feel anxiety, we have to listen to the body and then we have to help the nervous system to come down before we do that. It's really important to decide how you want to feel as we move forward through the next part of our life, uh, the next part of our society, the next part of the way that we're being. Before you're going into situations, the first thing is, is go gradually. Don't all of a sudden just decide to go into something that on a scale of one to 10, where 10 is high anxiety, it causes you high anxiety, okay? Go gradually, start with something that's like a one or a two for you, and then build on that. Decide how you wanna feel. So things like, I want to feel safe, I wanna feel calm, I wanna feel relaxed, and get connected to those feelings before you go out into the situation that's causing the anxiety. That's really important. What most people do is they want the situation to determine the way that they feel. So they're anxious, they put themselves in a situation that causes anxiety, and then they wonder why they can't calm themselves down. Go into the situation in a much more relaxed state. If you can't get there, then postpone what you're doing until you can really create the space and the time to do that for yourself. 
So you don't have to go from being in lockdown to all of a sudden, you know, going to public gatherings where there's like a hundred people. Take your time and build into that. The other thing that's come out of what um, seems to be a, a concern or a cause of anxiety for people is that there was many introverted people or people maybe who overcommitted or were people pleasing that felt a lot of, that now feel a lot of anxiety or pressure to now do the things like go to parties or uh, gatherings or overcommit now that we can. They were using lockdown as a way for them to hold a boundary for themselves, to give themselves that permission to say no to people. They didn't have to, the government was saying it for them. So if that is a concern for you, a reminder that you can still do what you want to do, just be mindful of the boundaries that you need to have in place in order to feel comfortable. So a reminder that it's okay to say no to things right now so that you get to decide what kind of life you want to move forward into. The third thing that I just wanted to mention about how to manage what's going on as we move forward is to really focus on the present moment. And sorry, Laura has a question. I'm going to get back to that in one second. Um, is to focus on the present moment. So what happens is anxiety is created by focusing on the future, not the present moment. And usually it's a future that never happens, but we think that we need to be prepared to protect ourselves in case something happens. So if we can stay in that present moment, and when you were doing the safe place meditation, I talked about grounding yourself in the present moment with all of your senses. If we're able to do that, then we can look at things like, what is the actual threat to me here in this moment? What is really going on and where is my control? What can I do about what is going on in the present moment? So if you find yourself focusing too far ahead, that's an indication that you're not living in the present moment and that's a chance for there to be anxiety or worry or stress. So come back to the present moment, ask yourself what is currently going on, how safe am I, what is within my control or my power to do right now here in this present moment. So just to, to recap, the first um, thing that you're going to think about is recognizing that your nervous system has been triggered throughout this long period of lockdown um, and what we've been dealing with. So we want to do things that help the body to come down. So thinking about what you can do and what you can commit to, to soothe the nervous system, to um, uh, really help your brain to come down so that you're able to move into new situations. The second thing is to stay in the present moment. And the third thing is deciding how you wanna feel before you go into to new situations and going gradually. Listen to yourself, get yourself in a more relaxed, safe frame of mind before you send yourself into new situations, okay? So I'm just going to, I see that Laura has a question. So I'm just going to answer that. Just let me read that. So Laura's question is, what if you don't have a real choice about going into the stressful situation, such as a legal issue that you have to attend to? So that's a, that's a great question. So for things that we kind of have to go into, and you're going to go to my point about deciding how you want to feel before you go into a situation. What we do when we feel anxious is we're focusing on things outside of us that we're allowing them to determine the way you feel. So for example, say, you know, a legal issue, a court case, a, a confrontation that you have to go into, you're wanting that or allowing that to dictate how you feel. It's going to be stressful. Therefore, I'm, I'm gearing up to be stressed. Instead, I invite you to think about how do you want to feel? And a way to manage that is to first ask yourself how you don't want to feel. So you don't want to feel stressed. You don't want to feel anxious. Uh, you don't want to feel unsafe emotionally. So how you would want to feel is the opposite of that. I want to feel confident. I want to feel emotionally safe. I want to feel calm. Um, and then what you do is you get connected to those feelings before you go into that situation. 
I also recommend doing a safe place meditation or some type of meditation where you can calm the nervous system before you go in there. So what we want to do is we want to be proactive versus reactive. When we're reactive, we're responding to the environment and the people in the situation. When we're proactive, we are deciding how we want to feel before we go into the situation. And it still may not be entirely pleasant, but you are going to be in a better frame of mind to deal with it. Because remember what I said, when our, when our old brain is being triggered, it can't comprehend anything else that's going on there. It's really hard to get yourself back down once you're triggered and you're like at a 10 in terms of uh, stress level or anxiety level. So you want to do that before you go into that situation. Does that make sense, Laura? Okay, you're welcome. Does anyone else have any other questions? I do. <laughs> I always do. Okay, um, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> um, part of your part of what you have been talking about is giving me a bit of an insight into this, but I'm finding myself. I'm vaccinated. Not everyone is. I know a lot of anti-vaxxers. Everything is everybody's personal decision. But what I am finding is after a year and a half of six foot, six feet of social distancing, and I would, if someone got too close, I would just say six feet over there, please. But all of a sudden people are, six feet doesn't matter, masks don't matter. And that whole seesaw, like if I'm vaccinated, why am I wearing a mask? Who am I protecting, you or me? Um, if I'm vaccinated, that means I'm not sick. So then why do I have to wear that? So are those all emotions that are part of the anxiety because we've been living it for a year and a half? Or is it such a drastic change because it's almost like summer is here, we, yeah, who it's a free for all. Um, so it, it is part of the, the messaging that we have been sent that this is the way that we're supposed to feel. If, if that's, if I'm, if I'm understanding your question, it's like, is that why, why do we feel that way? Is the, mm -hmm. is that the anxiety? Is that well, what you're cause saying? I'm, Cause I'm finding like all of a sudden people are getting closer than the six feet. And my first thought is, wait a minute, oh. back off, Jack. And then all of a sudden go, right. no, wait a minute, you know, we've relaxed some of the rules right? and now yeah. people are, are um, not as Canadian as they used to be. Right. Like we, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so your your question is 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 what then why are other people i guess my question is why like, do you feel that way why do i feel that way and is it is it all of a sudden we've gotten a little bit of a relief from the stress so where are we all now going yay we don't have to worry about anything yeah so it's it's very individual what's going on so um your, your that's anxiety that's coming up for you right mm -hmm. and each person has responded to the situation very differently like there's some people who who are were less concerned that than maybe you so um and it's interesting with the six feet i actually have a hard time with the six feet because the closeness right and i, I in terms of i don't like the six feet because our personal space is less than six feet for most people, right? And that's actually mm -hmm. why we have to stand six feet. So I find it really hard to keep six feet distance because I feel like I'm being uninterested or rude to people. <laughs> yes. So, right. So um, it's very interesting that there's, there's so many different individual responses to this. And overall, we have a lot of rules about how we were supposed to be. And even those things maybe have have calmed down or it's safer in whatever way, or there's less risk, we are going to feel anxious when people cross those boundaries because we've been told that that is wrong. And it reminds me of like when we were children, right? And I don't know if anyone else had this response, but you know, I had a, a parent that sometimes would yell at me if I was making too much noise. And I found that when I was older, sometimes when there was too much noise, I would expect to get in trouble, even though there's no parent around. <laughs> So this is a learned response that something bad is going to happen. So it's about trying to figure out what your comfort zone is again for you, recognizing what's coming up 
And I think all of us trying to understand where each person is coming from as well, that we all have different comfort levels with what's going on. Um, and I think it's really important to ask yourself, instead of just going like, um, sorry, see, this is a problem when people type here, I get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> I lose my track okay. of thought. I'm not, I'm not good at coordinating that. <laughs> I can't watch <laughs> subtitles on movies. Um, instead of just responding with like, with moving into the anxiety is actually to stop and ask yourself, what is it about this that's bothering me? Right? So is it that I'm afraid of getting sick? Is it I'm afraid of breaking rules? Because you're going to have different responses to each one. The other thing is that medical um, anxieties are really challenging to overcome because there is truth that you could get sick. There's truth in that. So it's more of like, if you can come back to the present moment of what is the actual risk to me right now in this present moment. And so that maybe also be able to help Anna too, if like right now in this present moment, what is the risk to me with, you know, lower cases or vaccinated people or, you know, being outside or whatever, that sort of thing. My daughter's home answer? visiting, it did, thank you very much. My daughter's home yeah. visiting from, she lives in Germany and they have an amazing practice. Once a week, you are allowed to get a free COVID test. So it's like, oh, come to dinner, Jasmine, just bring your negative test with you. And that's, right. it's become so normal for them if they're gonna go anywhere and especially her in-laws are getting to be elderly they go for the test once a week and they know, and then everybody else knows that you're safe. And I think, wow, right. wouldn't it be cool if we could do that here? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and again, that would be more information, which would help the brain to calm down. Anxiety happens a lot of times within there's an absence of information. So then our brain makes things up. So yeah, that was able them to feel a little bit more relaxed because they had more information. And I think that that's been the hardest thing with COVID is that there's so much we don't know. Right. And then things are changing. Like today it's, you know, at the beginning of this, they're like, don't wear masks. And now you have to wear masks. So <laughs> I think that's been so challenging for all of us to, for our brains to find a place to, to be safe. So it's almost like we can't even go to that to feel safe. We have to start within to help the brain to feel safe by just visualizing something that makes you feel that way and being mindful. If I can decide how I want to feel even when everything around me isn't great. And that's, it's, it's tough, but it is absolutely possible for you to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hi, it's Gary. Um, it might not have so much to do about the pandemic, but it, it does come into play there. Um, where there is people that uh, you connect with that are you know, old time friends or people that you encounter in um, your community, neighbors or, or elsewhere, who have uh, kind of conspiracy theories as part of, of their, their uh, understanding of things and mm -hmm. how it impacts the relationships that you have with those people and the realities that, um, you know, go through your mind as well in terms of, of doubts or, um, or even, you know, how, how do you relate to someone in those circumstances? I don't know, this is a confusing question, but I mm -hmm. have probably encountered 20 plus people, for example, as far as COVID, that um, don't wanna be vaccinated, don't uh, really feel that um, you know, their health is at risk or that there is a conspiracy theory that the media is, is um, you know, enforcing out there um, and, you know, so I guess the anxiety that comes with you know, dealing with people in those circumstances and, and part of my job is, is to, um, kind of oversee some things where I have encountered, as I say, many people who are resisting, um, 
of directions that I am giving to administer some some uh, um, organizational things. Mm -hmm. So I don't know so, the question, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so thanks, Carrie. So one of the most powerful questions that I have learned to ask in learning about relationships is to ask myself, what do I know about this person that their behavior or thoughts or feelings makes sense to me? Um, and not that it, you have to agree with it and that it makes sense from the way that you view the world, but what does this person, how does this person view the world? What are their fears? Fears driving all of our behavior through all of this, right? All of it. It's, we are all just so caught up in fear, whether it's you want a vaccination or you don't want a vaccination, right? It, that's all fear, right? So if you can ask yourself, and you may not know these people well, they may be people that you're just casually even knowing, but could you, could you try to understand where someone else may be coming from? And in that, we're able to look at their perspective, is their perspective based on what they've gone through in their lifetime. Our perspective is based on the sum of our experiences. And where you know, the difficulty and the anxieties come up, I think, and where the stress comes up is that, especially through all this, is that everyone has to believe the same, right? And if we can just try to understand where someone else is coming from, um, it can make sense to you and it can help us to view it in the same way. And if we can stay in curiosity and compassion, we cannot be reactive at the same time. And that has been the most powerful thing that I have learned in, in dealing with this. And, you know, in, 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 in my work, I come across people with all sorts of different views about everything. And I think if you're able to, you know, in some circumstances, maybe with friends that we're able to just kind of understand, and you can even ask them, help me to understand where you're, why you think this way and be generally curious about it. And then, you can maybe understand where they're coming from. And I, I guarantee you it's fear-driven thoughts that are behind a lot of this. That's the number one thing that I'm seeing with, with so many people. Does that give you a, <laughs> a bit of an answer? No, it, it does help. Um, yeah. And in some respects, they think I'm the one that has the fears that are unfounded yep. versus them. Yep. You know, they feel kind yep. of free in their, in their life circumstances. So, but, but I... Yeah. yeah. So you can also say to them, you can ask them, help me to understand. And then you can say to them, can I, can I, can I give you what my experience is? Can I help, you know, can I help you to understand where I'm coming from? And if we can do that also without the intention to change each other's minds, because that's kind of at the root of this, where difficulties is like, I'm only telling you and only listening to you so that I can change, I can form an argument so I can change your mind. So really, if we can come at it from a, this is just, I'm helping you to understand me and I want to understand you and that's it. Um, and that may, may help you to, to come to a different place of understanding. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. So yeah. Jasmine though, wouldn't it be safe to say, like we're talking about the pandemic and the vaccine, but that isn't yep. just the same issue. Like, in, you know, we're seeing all this racial stuff coming out and these hate crimes. And uh, isn't everything that's going on where we have any disagreement, which seems to be so exaggerated right now, disagreements, but it isn't yep. it all fear? And is, yes. it, is it disrespect for other people's opinion or is it fear? I'm, I get afraid if you don't believe what I believe. And so I get nervous. Does this difference of opinion create the anxiety? Is that the root? Because it just seems to be more exaggerated now than ever. And it's not just the pandemic, yeah. it's racial. Like just, yes. it's, and social media seems to be really exaggerating. It. This intolerance yes. for other perspectives. Yes, 100%, Tina. Like, and that's what I'm saying. This technique that I'm telling you, I learned in how to do couples counseling. <laughs> so it is relevant to every type of relationship that we have. It's fear with everything. And we do, I, I, I don't, not quite sure I understand it. I think it comes from, we want to make, really, really want to make sense of the world. And, and we do categorize people. So I want to put you in a certain category. So I know how to feel about you. And if you don't agree with me, 
then I have to put you in a different category. And it may be a category of, I don't like you too, or I definitely don't understand you, but either way, I'm not really sure. <laughs> so there is a lot of fear of what does that mean if we think differently? And if you've ever studied psychology, there's been, you know, many, many experiments done of what happens when groups are divided by nothing more than, you know, you make the blue widget and I make the green widget. And then all of a sudden we have different opinions. <laughs> so we want to be, we want to be similar. That's actually what actually makes us feel safe. And I think it's part of that um, need to belong part of um, uh, the old part of our brain that wants to feel safe within a group or within a tribe. So yes, this is, this is at the root of it is not accepting differences. And that is by, um, if we're able to understand where somebody else is coming from, it can stop that where it's, oh, it's, you mean, it's not against me why you think the way you do. <laughs> I, that's sometimes where our brain goes. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's just a different topic, but it's been going on for a very long time. And sometimes it just, it exists more in particular in our families and in our, in our relationships as well. Um, I, I, so you do all these exercises to stay calm before you go out and, um, you go out and someone's coming close to you. And I say, you know, I'll say, you know, excuse me, you're a little too close or whatever. And I got so many comments like, oh, you're one of them. Um, hmm. what are you afraid of? Uh, stop it. You're being ridiculous. You're stupid. I mean, here I'm calm and all of a sudden all this floating of negative comments made because yeah. I am trying to be safe. So then the anxiety yeah. starts again, you know, yeah. because I'm being put down for trying to be safe. So, so do Phyllis, you, does that happen to you every time you go out? No, no. How many times has it happened? Does it happen once a day, oh, twice a day? No, it doesn't happen that often. I have no problem telling a person if they're wearing a mask under their nose to, you know, flip it over their nose or what have you. But I will sometimes, even a cashier said to me, I don't need to put my mask over my nose because I'm behind the plexiglass. And I said, but I would prefer that you wear it up over your nose. Oh, you're being silly. I said, I'm not being so, I'm just asking you to be safe because I want to be safe. You know, stuff like that. I went into another, to a healthy planet and a kid, you know, young boy, and he started yelling at me. I'm safe, I'm clean, I'm going to visit my grandmother. Oh, I don't know that. And I find that the employees don't say a word. They don't, which is probably another side of the issue, another fear, but how, you know, here I'm going, I'm taking a chance. And yeah. I do have a lot of anxiety or I did have a lot of anxiety over this. And so it doesn't help to hear all these negative, to hear these negative comments. Um, yeah. So what do you do? <laughs> then it's yeah. Again. Yeah. So definitely make sure that you're in a more relaxed state before you go, because that does make a difference. Right. And the other big thing is that our brain is like a computer that, is programmed. So if we give it something to focus on, that's what it's going to look for. So your brain right now is looking for incidences where you're unsafe and then you target on it and then you have the feelings with it. It's, you know, similar to, you know, if you were going to get a new car, right? I bought a, I bought a new truck last year and all of a sudden I saw them everywhere. So did they just start suddenly making more trucks in the like couple days that I started looking? No, now this truck was in my brain. And now it's like my brain was like um, a homing beacon looking for it out there. So that's kind of what's going on for you is you're looking for incidences where you're unsafe. So I invite you to flip that around and look for examples where you're safe. Look for people being helpful or nice or considerate or compliant or whatever it is that you're needing to feel. And I guarantee you, if you do that, you're going to see more, more examples where you're able to feel safe. But right now you're very, very focused on what the danger might be. Well, of and course so, I look for, you know, being safe, yeah. of course, you know, sometimes right. I put two masks on, but. Right. 
you know, right. how do you, you're standing in line in the checkout and the girl's not wearing a mask, you know, she, mm -hmm. or she flips it down under her nose, you right. know, it just suddenly happens here. I'm, I'm going to her because she has a plexiglass. She was safe wearing the mask and then flips it down. Or I'm talking to a salesman and a, in walks a young man with the mask, without a mask, for example, or comes close to me. So you can't, I'm not looking for it. It just happens. Of course, I'm right. <laughs> I'm standing along six feet, and all these people are passing me by, and I'm thinking, "You so, should be doing that." <laughs> How can I say safe? It'll just, just do an experiment, okay? Just do an experiment with me, okay? What I just want you to do is, I want you to, for seven days, I want you to practice safe place meditation, okay? And I want you to really make sure you're in a calm state before you leave the house. And do this by looking at um, on a scale of one to 10, where 10 is high anxiety. What is your level of anxiety before you leave the house? You want to make sure that you're quite low. And if you're not, don't go out. Wait until you're more relaxed. And then I want you to do an experiment where you look for people who are friendly and helpful. And in, in, in what ways are you safe? I want you to keep looking for that. Okay. And then notice how you feel after doing that. Like I said, we've been bombarded by these messages for a long time. So it's going to take a long time for your brain to feel safe. But eventually, we're going to stop wearing masks. So we need to help you to kind of ease back into what society looks like with reduced measures. Okay, and this is the way to do it. All right? Would you be willing to try that for seven days? Oh, for sure. I mean, I okay, try right. to be calm when somebody comes close, for example. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you yeah. see these negative comments, I don't know if anybody else. I know. Has. It's very, very I know. difficult. Yeah, I know. Uh, people are very anxious and anxiety also shows up as irritability. So that's also where that's coming from, right? We're all a little tired of what we've been experiencing. We all have had different experiences. So I totally understand that that's been really unpleasant for you to deal with. I totally get that. Let's try to get you in a more framed frame of mind where you can feel a little bit calmer when you go in. Okay. And Laura has a question. I'm just going to get that. Uh, does that only work if you felt safe before the pandemic? I never felt safe before either. Um, no, it's not just for... This is generally, and this is actually the technique that I use to help people with generalized anxiety. I do a lot of work with people. Anxiety is the primary focus of my practice. So these are all techniques that I use to help people overcome anxiety. And it does work. Um, it just takes regular practice. And when your body is used to being in fight or flight, it takes a long time to come down. There's also chemicals going on in your body, adrenaline, high levels of cortisol that make it hard for the parasympathetic nervous system be, to be engaged and to allow you to relax. So this can work whether you have felt safe before or after. And I think working with a therapist or working with someone who helps with anxiety specifically could be really helpful because the pandemic has made things so much more exaggerated for anyone who's experienced anxiety. It's even worse. This is, you know, I've had I have two clients who have real medical anxiety fears. This has been really, really challenging for them. It's like their worst fears have come. Um, so we've had to work very, very hard, again, using these techniques, understanding what thoughts are. If you can understand what is triggering that, you can learn how to address that. But it will take time. The other thing is to remember, you know, um, you know, for a lot of us, we did this before and it was okay. So we kind of have to also too, if you can look for previous examples where you felt safe out in public, where you felt um, just confident being out there, if you can connect with the energy and the emotion of that and bring that forward into now, that can also help for you to remember what it feels like in your body. Okay. Is there any other questions? I have one unless someone who hasn't gone would like to ask a question. 
Um, kind of following up a little bit about what Phyllis is. Um, for instance, I know a few people who I considered educated. One of them is actually a doctor of chiropractic who is very anti-vax. Mind you, she's, she's never vaccinated her kid for anything. So it, this is not new. But when you ask them questions, why are they so defensive? I, um, for instance, um, this person, her daughter is not getting vaccinated, but the boyfriend did. And the mother said, you are not allowed to hang around anywhere near my daughter for two weeks. And I said, oh, why is that? And the response came back logically. I mean, I don't know enough about medical to, to yay or nay it, but it was, there was this element of how dare you question my belief attitude in a lot of people who are anti anything. Um, is that part of their anxiety or is it just, maybe I'm just way too nosy, who knows? <laughs> that's very true though. well <laughs> so people who are choosing to be unvaccinated or have different popular opinions are being also verbally attacked and made to feel like they're wrong so perhaps her experience has been that she has been attacked okay so that's probably she's defensive because that's been her experience and like you know we were talking about before there's been <laughs> Basically, if you have a different opinion, you're wrong <laughs> with anything, <laughs> either way, <laughs> right now. So this is, we're all a little, we're also all a little bit edgy, right? And this is also what I'm going to say is like, if we can move into more compassion for, we don't know what other people have, how they've experienced this pandemic, what has it been like for them, you know, um, and just, you know, I, I follow a lot of Brene Brown. I don't know if any of are you familiar with her, but she says in it, like, people are just doing the best that they can. And I like that. It's like, nobody is out there personally to try to get to get at you or disagree with you or make you unhappy. We're all just doing the best job that we can. And I feel like if we could have more compassion for each other and coming from that place and recognizing that probably the majority of the population is dealing with anxiety on some level, just in different ways, fear about the vaccine, fear about getting sick, fear about you know, not getting the vaccine, all these sorts of things. We're all experiencing that. So I leave you with that, that people are, we're all just doing the best job that we can. Can we have compassion, not only for others, but for ourselves as we navigate our way through this, it's going to take time to be able to feel like we've got a handle on this again.